Warning. 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 Sisters and misses and misters, here's your daddy yo with the sounds to go. No shucking, no jiving. I'm telling you, your music's arriving. <laughs> everybody. I'm Largo. This is Alaire and welcome to the lounge. Something new we're trying out here. Just a casual place to hang and chill and talk about some cool stuff. And today or tonight, depending on where you are in the world, we're going to be talking with one of my friends and yours, Bjorn Jorgensen, who is going to share some of his favorite things to collect. And also joining us is our other buddy, Wilhelm from Wilhelm Toy and Hobby. Hey, Will. How you doing? Um, maybe if you unmute your mic, we could find out how you're doing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was going to say, I finally made it into the lounge. I was Don't, standing out there for yeah. an hour. They kept telling me I wasn't on the list. <laughs> That's a tough bouncer, man. Uh, I, was like, I know you, him. I know Largo. Please. You, you got to bribe the rooster if you want to get past the velvet rope. <laughs> I know. Speaking of velvet ropes, uh, there was a benefit recently, and I just want to say thank you to everybody who participated. We had a great time and raised a lot of money, uh, met our goal, uh, so that Rolo can get some much-needed medical attention. So he's got what he needs to be able to take care of the procedures, and everybody had a great time. It was fun, and... Uh, Oof, six hours. I was only there for the first three, but it was, it was, yeah, it was, uh, it was a trip. And uh, thanks to Grindhead for hosting. Thanks to everybody who showed up so, and everybody what who participated. What a great toy community we've got going on here. So glad to be a part of it. Absolutely. And one of the members of our community that we are going to talk to today is our buddy Bjorn. Welcome Bjorn, and uh, we've got all yeah, kinds of cool welcome. stuff coming up. Yeah, everyone That's knows it. him from the chats. They know that if they step out of line, he's the the, the man with the wrench. And right. He's going to set them straight. So, but That's what right. does Bjorn? Yeah, like wrench it up right? everywhere. <laughs> That's it. So, yeah, Bjorn has been a contributor for uh, many channels, uh, Weird Fantastic Toy Adventures. He'll also show up with uh, Grindhead Jim and a few other of our buddies. And uh, today we're going to talk about one of his other passions, which is Lego. Uh, Bjorn has quite the collection, and uh, we're going to talk about uh, some of that in a minute. So just to get a brief overview of what uh, Lego is all about. Founded in 1932, Lego actually started making wooden toys and then switched to plastic much later. They are the number one toy company in the world by uh, popularity, by number of toys produced, and uh, also, oddly enough, the largest tire manufacturer in the world, which kind of makes sense. I mean, they do make a lot of little wheels for a lot of little cars, and that's a lot of tires. 
on average, there are about 80 bricks per person on the earth. And that number is increasing exponentially. So Bjorn, uh, what got you into Legos, buddy? Uh, something that will come uh, later in this presentation. Ooh, mystery. Okay, yes. fair enough. This is uh, this is kind of neat. I, I, you know, remember Legos as a kid, but they were a little different. Uh, they the minifigures were introduced later on, and uh, they they gained in popularity uh, after I was kind of past that phase. So, I do remember the space Legos though. 78, 88, that was the classic space era. And I had, I think, one or two of those sets from the, the late 70s, early 80s. And they were pretty cool. Oh, yeah. So the uh, the logo has pretty much been the same ever since. And uh, they've done, you know, the Space Explorer. They've done, they did a lunar lander. They did some other cool stuff. But I think what most people nowadays know Space Legos for is... Benny, Benny from uh, the Lego movie. I love that guy. He was way, way too happy. And here's <laughs> one he of is. Benny's many brothers. Yeah. So this was one of the original space Legos. Hey, Chef. And uh, so he came in a, a, a lot of flavors, him and his, his cousins. So we've got a list here of the different versions. We've got blue, white, black, yellow, red, green, pink. And uh, what's the last one there? Brown. Brown. Yeah. And uh, Bjorn was saying that if you could even do some customs if you want, like if you wanted to make a purple astronaut, you could uh, like put some pieces together. How, how does that work, Bjorn? Well, with the purple one, it was released the torso on a part of the collectible minifigure series, but mm -hmm. the arms and legs had printing on them, whereas the classic space do not. But okay, all the available pieces that you see here are available in purple. Okay, cool. And hey, that's uh, another neat the, thing who's, about these. Who's that little guy down there in the corner? Yes, that's his, uh, Benny's little nephew. <laughs> so these are the new micro figures. Uh, these are pretty recent, right? Uh, yes, within the last five years. Okay. So another Lego innovation. Now they've Baby got even uh, uses the same construction. Oh, cool! Oh. Very neat. So we go from classic space right into adventures. Now this was a set I was not aware of because I wasn't into Lego at this time. But it looks really cool. I love the the idea. This was Lego doing their own IP, uh, creating new sets, new styles, and we have. As their mascot, Johnny Thunder. What a cool name. Cool hat. Um, what do you know about this line, Bjorn? Well, not too much because I didn't have it as a kid. I came to appreciate it as an adult. But it was okay. basically their, their Indiana Jones. He went on adventures ah. to different areas like Egypt, the jungle, whatever. Cool. And so Except he's got a cool mustache and his hat is turned up on the side, not Indiana Jones. Right. Yes. <laughs> and the neckerchief. That's a nice oh, yeah, uh, yeah, touch. Yeah. So we've got adventurers, we've got space. There was uh, what other themes? There's city, there was castle. Um, Those are the core this... themes, though. Okay. And then the various then... sub themes are the ones we know of. Okay, so this would be more of a, a, a sub-theme, or were adventures kind of well, a bigger uh, thing? This is their own theme. This isn't a sub-theme oh, okay. that can be derived from uh, space, city, or uh, castle. Okay, so they kind of go off and do their own different mini-adventure things and themes. and They have their own IPs, as well as okay. licensed themes, which we will also get to later in the... Okay. okay, fair enough. Speaking of which, uh, while they did their own IP for adventurers, uh, they eventually got the license for Indiana Jones and started making licensed figures. They started in 2008 with this line, and with the new Indiana Jones film coming, they are relaunching. So we'll get some new Lego sets with Indy and the gang. Um, I see two different examples here, Bjorn. Which is which? 
the left is the original 2008 and the new one is uh, the 2023 one. Okay. So definitely the printing technology for the faces and the shirt fronts have gotten a little fancier. The hat looks a little different too. Is there, what's the difference there? Well, it's kind of hard to see on the newer one, but he has hair and a hat at ah. the same time. Whereas before right. you could only have hair or a hat. Yeah. The the facial expression looks a little bit more uh, detailed. Even has got a little bit of a five o'clock shadow there, I think. That's kind of cool. Well, yeah, yeah and he's got that on the smart, original, that grin, it's you know, that see, grin. But yeah. on the original, it's dots as ah. the five o'clock shadow. And on the newer one, it's, it's, it's more Just, colored. Yeah. Okay, just the, the printing technology has gotten a little fancier. But very neat. I like these. Yeah, they're uh, really cool. Yeah. And uh, what else do we have here? Oh, yeah, another uh, cool. franchise that they uh, – or another IP that they picked up at one time was Nickelodeon's Avatar. So this was based on the cartoon show that Nickelodeon did. And this was 2006, and they only made two sets. So for some reason, the, the license uh, didn't stick around very long. Well, is that it was due to popularity, unusual? and they said low. Uh, I get what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, Production. Demand. Ah, right. So they didn't sell a whole lot. They they decided not to continue the line. How many did they some, did they do? Did they do the whole all the characters from the cartoon, or most of them? Or well, they did mainly from season one mm -hmm. of the show. So they didn't include uh, the later team members like Toph, who was the Earthbender, or okay. Appa. Did they ever? It's flying bison. The uh, bison. Right? I remember the bison. He was cool. They, they should have done that. Like Appa was the best. Yeah. There now, has anybody like made cabbages? models out there of Appa? I was going to ask. It's like <laughs> Lego guys are customizers. So if there's a way to make something, they'll figure it out. Like so you and uh, Action Force. Yeah, yeah, I love to customize <laughs> those things. So I remember the Castle series, but I don't remember Knight's Kingdom. This is something that came later on, but it kind of built off of the castle system. Any fantasy theme that they come up with is automatically a sub-theme of castle. Oh, okay. okay. Well, then, And they're all compatible as far as, uh, well, Lego's all compatible. They all work together. Well, Lego is like Valiverse. You can swap the pieces and they will fit on any figure cool now these I mean, the look a lot have different been the same since 1978 okay so the basic yeah. design of the figure it, it hasn't changed much but the accessories are definitely different like the 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 knights i remember from the early castles they didn't have armor like this this no, was I a newer was, innovation was, right it was, it was just they had painted. Printed armor right yeah these are a lot fancier so what what do you know about knight's kingdom well, this is actually Knights Kingdom 2. Oh, okay. It has nothing to do with the first Knights Kingdom. And, so uh, the sequel has the different they were characters? Trying new things. Okay. Well, there was four main hero knights. Mm -hmm. uh, this one here is my favorite. And Jaco is his name? Yes. I believe so his at this uh, point symbol was the eagle. Oh, cool. So they all have different crests on their shields or whatnot? Well, there was a bear, a monkey, a wolf, and an eagle. Okay. So they had uh, horses, jousting stuff. Is that kind of all the knights-themed uh, sets yeah. that went with them? Okay. There was also some, some minor storyline. And did the knights have different colors similar to, like, the astronaut Legos? Or were they all the kind of the uniform uh, yeah. or... Jacob was light blue. Uh, there was a red one, a purple one, and a green one. But I can't remember cool. which which one is which. Right. Did they have a black knight? Because you got to have a black knight. Well, yes, and naturally he was the evil one. Nice. I always remember. I believe his name was Vladek. Nice. Oh, cool. He had name. a really yeah. cool helmet design. Yeah. The bad guys get the cool helmet. They get the cool horse. They get the you know, all the cool gear. But uh, this looks like this would have been a lot of fun. I like this uh, this subset. Yeah, it's I never knew neat. anything about them. I like them as well. Very cool. Yeah. 
I can definitely see why people collect the minifigures because each one kind of tells a story. And with these, Lego had started branching out. They weren't just doing generic characters anymore. Now each of the characters had a name. They had a backstory. <coughs> some of these, didn't they even get cartoons for some stuff? Uh, yeah. Uh, I believe Ninjago has a long-running one since like 2009. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Legend and of Shima, which was like a Thundercats type, they had one too. So these were, again, original Lego IPs that they created their own storylines with. But they still did yes. franchise stuff, too, the uh, big IPs. Here they got into Disney. And uh, Toy Story was super popular. And Lego just yeah. uh, knocked it out of the park with that first set. I mean, that Woody looks really good yeah. for just being a Lego minifigure. And that was 2009 to 2010. And they covered the first three Toy Story movies. And so they had yeah. these uh, characters who were very much like they were in, in the Toy Story movies. But then 2009, something kind of went weird. They came back, but that looks like... Oh, I'm sorry, 2019. That looks more like cosplay Woody. That doesn't look like Woody. What happened? It's like they went back. Yeah. A lot of the fans yeah. said the same thing. There was some backlash. Yeah, definitely. Because the the one the, the first set they put out that definitely looks like Woody. Uh, the other one, like I said, looks like a guy just yeah. wearing a Woody suit. Uh, each character had specially molded heads, and you could tell it was that character. Yeah, with these definitely. Eh, eh, yeah. Well, you know, sometimes you you hit it out of the park. Sometimes it's eh. Mm. Whoops. Uh, slipped a slide there. Sorry. Okay, so here's another one that whoop, I did it again. Apologies. I got an itchy trigger finger. So this is another <laughs> one where they, they're they're very innovative. Um, I'm digging the purple hair, man. That's cool. This is uh, Exoforce, which was another Lego uh, brand that they put together. What is it? So here is anime inspired. So uh, what what was the theme here? Uh, at its simplest form, mechs versus evil robots. Ooh. Mechs are cool. Evil robots are even cooler. So is this and one of your favorite And even lines? the evil robots had mechs. Oh, nice. Awesome. And I, I'm lo loving the, the purple spiky hair look. Very anime. So the, the hair Don't piece, that's something new. It still hurts yeah. to step on. Oh, yeah. All even Lego though does. it was a rubbery plastic. Even though it was a rubbery yeah. plastic, it still hurt. Yeah, you don't <laughs> even you don't want to walk on Lego it was anime hair. And anime Spiking. hair is always pointy. Exactly. <laughs> Never be barefoot in a room full of Very Lego cool. on the floor. <laughs> so now we'll get to the big enchilada here. Star Wars. Yeah, this one really blew the doors off for Lego minifigure sets. I remember these and I wasn't into Lego, but they were everywhere, every store um, when they were promoting the uh, prequels. I remember Star Wars Lego was n something new and cool. So you had all the classic characters plus some of the prequel characters. You had vehicles, you had Wookiees, you got droids, everything in Lego. And uh, this kind of changed. This was a game changer for Lego, wasn't it, Bjorn? Well, as we will get into in, I believe, the next slide. Okay. This line was a lot of innovations for Lego. There was a okay. lot of firsts with this line. Now, this is our farm boy, Luke, and he looks pretty much like all the regular minifigures. He's got the yellow tone to his skin, uh, basic brick style. But you can tell it's Luke Skywalker. But uh, oh, they yeah. do do some... Inno yeah. Okay, so they, but they did do some innovations. Star Wars Lego is the run, longest running licensed theme at 24 years as of about now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And this was the first theme to use something other than the yellow skin that they did on most of their minifigures. So this one had flesh color heads. And uh, speaking of heads, the, the guy you love to hate from Star Wars, Jar Jar Binks, got the very first minifigure with a specially molded head. And then this followed in other lines, like what we saw with Toy Story, where they started doing custom Nisa heads. have a specialty character. molded head. <laughs> Indeed. So he's an innovator. One fact you, you though, got... I forgot to include was 
they are also the first to use short legs for Yoda. Ah, that makes sense. Yeah. And uh, Jawas. Uh, there were some Jawa Legos, too. So everybody yes. got uh, got some cool stuff. And uh, 80% of the top 10 most expensive minifigures for collectors are Star Wars related. Super popular. And speaking of collectibles, this one has a special backstory I am curious to hear more about. So, uh, Will, you, you have some experience with this, don't you? Yeah, I do. As a matter of fact, uh, yeah, I was working at KB Toys in 1999. And, you know, shipment came in and we opened the boxes and boom, we got uh, Star Wars Legos, this new exciting line. Um, and at the time, I didn't know where it was going to go. You know, we had uh, Star Wars Power of the Force 2 was coming out. I think uh, mm. some of the episode one stuff was coming, you know, coming out. So everything Star Wars is new again and it's, right. it's coming back. So, you know, it's exciting. Obviously had Lego as a kid. Uh, played with it here and there, you know, just nothing really. But, you know, this is probably, for me, it was like going to get me back into Lego. So I was like, oh, this could be really interesting to build some of my favorite Star Wars vehicles. So when these first came out, I went ahead and uh, picked them up. But then adulting happened, and I never did anything. <laughs> so they set in a box and sealed in a, you know, a Tupperware bin uh, mm. for, uh, what is that? 20, 21 years or something until wow. just uh, last summer when I was getting ready for this toy sale and mm -hmm. I was doing some live streams and Bjorn was one of the people that was hanging out with me with uh, almost every stream and lo and behold I pulled this thing out and I'm like hey I forgot I had this I bought these years ago on a whim and never built them that caught Bjorn's attention he's like wait a second yeah. And he tells me the following tale. Go ahead, Bjorn. Tell us about your first time. Well, one quick question, though. When you have put up the Star Wars set, did you have a cardboard display or were they just put on shelves? Yeah, I think they may have it, probably just put them on shelves in my store. We had a pretty small store. So even a lot of times because when they did something the one... in those cardboard standees, we didn't have the room for them. So we would usually take the product out and then put it on a, a shelf or an end cap just because of space. Right. You know, if you remember, but KB Toy Store. The reason tight, why I uh, ask. Small little stores, yeah. The reason why I ask is because how I discovered the set was I turned the corner and I saw the big cardboard display like you see nowadays with mm -hmm. all the various sets in it. It was full of this oh, set. Oh, okay. Wow. And I want to say that my grandma got it. And she was always very supportive of me getting stuff. Cool. Very cool. Like, she was always getting me collecting stuff. Nice. And she yeah. since passed on. And so. so Bjorn told me that story. And rather than, you know, take it to that toy show and sell it off, um, I went ahead and sent it over to Bjorn. And uh, when he got it, I was shocked. I thought he was going to keep it. Um this majestic man here, Mr. Jorgensen himself, uh, he did a, a Instagram live stream where he opened and assembled it. And uh, I got to be there and watch you know, him enjoying the, this toy. So it was really a great moment for me. And, um, well, Mirren, it was a great moment for you, I assume. Uh, but, yeah. I almost really cool. didn't want to do it because the box was so fresh. Yeah, I mean that is that is awesome to be able to find to find something that's you know that old in mint condition, let alone for it to be one of your favorite childhood memory toys, yeah. and you know for it to be something that you got from a loved one. Man, that's just that's awesome. That that hits yeah, and on then so first many just levels. by chance make that connection so many years yeah. later, and then uh, you know for it to build our friendship. That's great. So wonderful. That's moment. cool. I put. And uh, I put each of those memories on equal footing because yeah. oh, that each come from a person I, I, I love. Oh, and that's, uh, that's a cool thing about you know, the collecting community is, you know, I have a lot of stuff in my collection that I enjoy, but the pieces I really cherish are usually ones I got as a gift from another collector or a friend or somebody mm -hmm. who 
understands the or appreciates what we collect. So yeah. this one, this one is definitely very special. Uh, uh, that is a cool story. And uh, speaking of favorites, oh boy, <laughs> here we go. The gift hey, that right just Jim, keeps, if you're watching, yes. cover your eyes. We you should have put a, <laughs> yeah. Put a warning. Is, yeah, the meme that just keeps on giving. This thing yeah. has taken on a life of its own. The majestic tiger that has become uh, iconic, if you will. And, the stream uh, ender or killer. Or <laughs> Wasn't it called something for a while? Yes, the stream, the stream ender, ender, I think it was coined. And, because uh, that you know, Brian had Jim's dream, I stopped cold. Yes. Right in its uh, tracks. And, and for those who came in late, we should explain, the tiger itself is a very cool model. But what makes yes. it so show-stopping is, is the other end. Uh, the designer decided to get creative, and this, this tiger has some anatomical correctness that probably goes a little too far for a toy. If you know well, what I mean. It's one of the rare slip ups from Lego. Something actually <laughs> made it past their careful screening. Indeed. Uh, if you want to know more about the posterior yeah. of the Majestic Tiger, go look it up yourself, you perv. It's, it's on the <laughs> internet. It's a meme. Uh, but it can also be uh, a red panda or a koi fish. This was one of the, uh, what do they call them? Um, the three in one. I want to say They're triple changer. Yeah, triple three changer and transformers. Okay. Three and one creator sets. So these and are if you look here on one. the tree here for the red panda, mm -hmm. you will see the aforementioned pink Lego piece. Indeed. Uh, oh, as, man. As, as That's a, cool. A they put all those tiger butts on, on, a, <laughs> on a tree? That's just gruesome. <laughs> well, there is a set that they release called a bonsai tree, and it's filled with those pink flower pieces. They they are flowers. <laughs> it's all it's all a matter of your point of view. So, uh, yeah, it, this is cool, and these are geared more towards, uh, uh, I guess, more. I, I want to say uh, not adult collector, but more like teens because they're more sophisticated in the build. A little bit. It yeah, really yeah. depends upon the model because it comes okay. with three sets of instructions, three separate right, instruction three booklets. Yeah, they all look great. Yeah, so whichever one you want to build, uh, this will always be my favorite. But uh, yeah, that's cool that you I can, say you can one do different fact. things. Mm -hmm. Neither of these other two models have the aforementioned uh, piece. Ah, indeed. Gotcha. They are so featured in the side builds, but they don't have it on them. Right, just, just in their uh, accessories. Okay. Fair enough. And speaking of accessories, freaking laser sharks. That's the ultimate accessory for <laughs> any kind of any kind of shark or critter. You got to put a freaking laser. And this was done way before we even started talking about this. I mean, this has been kind of an inside joke amongst our little toy collecting community for a little while. We've now. been demanding these for yeah. a while now, and then do we know, digs do we know anybody that can do that? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, possibly. But uh, so this was part of Lego Agents, which was their like James Bond homage set. And so they had a lot of Bond type villains. Uh, and then they had the special agents. And of course, the nemesis uh, gave us laser. And uh, one of them is actually a missile shark, right? So he's got missiles and the other one has a laser. Yes. How the cool one on the that? right is the missile shark. Nice. The one on the left is the laser shark. And it's even so, referred to as that in, on the information about the set. Okay. So even Lego saw that laser sharks was something that definitely needed to be on the toy aisle. So Truly innovative. They, I mean, they... Yeah. Hey, if, if Lego can do it, I'm certain other certain uh, toy makers... Uh, boutique type toy makers could make this happen. I'm not naming any names, Resurrection Toys, but I think this is something that should happen. And we we see we see that it can be done. So laser sharks, that's awesome. Uh, and then woo to go from there to the ultimate in in building. This is like the the master class in Lego. These now, what is this series, Bjorn? They call these ultimate collector. <laughs> 
Yes, it's part of their 18 plus line nowadays. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've do. seen some. Yeah, some of these are just crazy detailed. Um, our friend Brick Something has been doing a, a, a run with one of his friends. Yeah, building, he had uh, Kayla on. And, yeah. yeah, and they uh, they unboxed Beautiful. and they started building that, that ribbon mill. Wow, yeah. what a set. So this is, cool. is the Falcon in all its glory. And you really, this just doesn't, the box doesn't do it justice. This thing is huge. There is a, a, a fellow on Instagram. His name is Kevin Parry or Perry. I'm not sure the pronunciation. I think it's Perry. He, Perry. He is a stop motion animator. And I'm, I'm going to pull up his, uh, his stuff here because you guys got to see what he did with this thing. It's amazing. Let me share that screen. And... Uh, Let's see. There it is. Yeah. Check this out. Um, he took the Lego model and then put it into a stop motion piece. And that's, that's Kevin there. Uh, and look at the, just the detail of this thing. That is so cool. So he's showing the actual build of yeah. this thing. You can see just from the, the landing struts, it's massive. And that's just the, the infrastructure to hold this thing in place, all these intricate pieces. It's, it's totally, it's all about it's the engineer. Mind, mind blowing. One, yeah. the size and complexity of the model. And then two, I mean, two things that fascinate me is like how people build these Lego sets and, and how people do stop motion. This is oh, yeah. first such patience and precision. So and look at this. Look at the detail on this thing. I mean, all the interior rooms have detail. You've got uh, figures from both uh, Force Awakens and from the classic trilogy. Uh, it's just it, very unique parts. Uh, so Empire's much going on. Empire's in her figures, though. Oh, okay. Hey, Empire is one of my favorites, so I'm I'm all on board for that. They say this it's normally is favorite. Okay, this is like a, a twenty hour build for one person. If you're uh, on that uh, expert level, I guess for me it'd probably take well, longer. Yeah, that's more yeah, of an approximation. I, okay, and that may have been with one or more people involved. Yeah, and I'm I'm guessing the instruction booklet for this is about the size of a phone book. Or an encyclopedia. Well, I believe you might have a book about the same size behind your head. Oh yeah, the, the, the uh, novel Axe from novel. Uh, exactly. <laughs> so this it's thing is just, just amazing. Thing. Yeah. So because I just thought this was instruction booklets or pamphlets, basically. Right. This thing has it's got so book. many different parts. I mean, and there's there's the crew in the cockpit. Uh, everything is ready for your uh, your favorite smuggler to uh, bounce around the uh, the galaxy in his fastest hunk of junk. That is so cool. And technically, it's a two in one set because oh, really? of the Force Awakens thing. Yeah, they oh, include right. the big square one. So because very the radar beautiful. disc got knocked off in uh, Return of the Jedi. Right. I, I highly recommend uh, this fella, Kevin Perry. Check him out. He does some super uh, stop motion. Yeah, that was pretty amazing. amazing. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that something? That is well, just so The links cool. to everyone mentioned or most people mentioned are going to be somewhere. Yeah. Either so, you, me, or Will's going to do it. Okay. Yeah, definitely. We'll... we'll delve further into you know some of these these other lego sets because they're so cool uh Definitely. and some of these are crazy uh, expensive too let me pop back here yeah so these yes. are limited edition collector's pieces that were some of these were randomly put into like what blind bags or certain sets well just this first one. Oh, the c3po uh, okay. special 30th anniversary of the star wars line not the lego star wars line but star wars so you get this for your kid and he pulls out a 14 karat gold c3po and yeah. not knowing yeah it's like that's just crazy well so, at the time it was around about ten thousand dollars oh approximate yes. value. yeah that's since yeah. gone up as the price of gold has gone sure. up well, plus being a collectible, I'm sure it, it has a, a secondary market value to it as well. So we have a 14 karat gold C3PO. 
we have uh, one that is actually made of wood, which we know now that the original Legos were, were made of wood as well. And a this white one was made for the Lego Ninjago movie. Okay. Oh, Apparently, there's only two in the world. Oh. Wow. Super rare. And That's we've why got it's R- so expensive. Right. There's R2D2 in white gold. 39,000 estimated value, give or take. That's crazy for a little Lego piece. Come on. But, yeah. you know, uh, rarity and uh, collector demand. Some other sets include a solid silver C-3PO, a sterling silver R2-D2, and a bronze C-3PO. Yeah, I'm sensing are... a, a theme here. Those those two droids seem to be very popular in well, the, the limited collectibles. Well, out of the 10, top 10 uh, uh, most expensive ones, uh, three are C-3PO, two are R2-D2, three are someone who's next in this slide, and two are okay. non-Star Wars. Wow. Interesting. So we've seen the wooden one, which was from Ninjago, and this is Boba Fett. So this was part yes. of a special, uh, was this Comic-Con or toy convention? What was this? I want to say it's a, comic, a San Diego Comic-Con. Okay. All I know for sure is that it is a Comic-Con exclusive. Right. And Bjorn, is it true that you have all of these on a chain and that you wear them <laughs> around? <laughs> like Mr. T? Only on Tuesdays. <laughs> Fair enough. So gold, uh, bronze, and silver in the Boba Fett set. And then the very last one of these uh, s- exclusives, the Black Suit Superman from the Snyderverse Justice League. This one actually uh, surprised me because you for know, some reason it was out of left field. Yeah. Now, they've done other superheroes. Lego did uh, all the DC heroes. They did the Marvel heroes, which was kind of unusual in itself because the last time we saw all the heroes get together from the two major powerhouses in comics was when Mego had the license back in the 70s when they were doing the, the superhero line. So since then, nobody's really been able to do that. Lego gave you the ability to have all of the heroes together in, in one happy uh, family. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Who else but Lego? Innovative. And I will say, they have done most of the Super Friends. Hmm. Now, have they done, they did the Wonder Twins, right? And Gleek, too? Uh, no, they did the Wonder Twins. It was a part of a collectible minifigure series for the right. Lego Batman movie. That's right, because I saw them in no like Gleek. a little cameo. No Gleek. But there was a Wonder Dog. Oh, nice. Uh, no, actually. No? There should be. That's Actually, a crying I believe, shame. I think there may have been an Ace the Bat Hound. Okay. But yeah, somebody needs to I get Lego the only one. one. Gotta have a Gleek, man. Yeah. Well, well this, or Bjorn, uh, the they, world of uh, Lego minifigures is pretty fascinating. Uh, I could see why you're so into just, them. That's just one thing of the many things I collect. Oh, really? Well, and, and we've just scratched the surface of that because you said you've got, what, like over 500 of these minifigures from different sets? At last count. Wow. Yes. Wow. That's cool. So I know I, that... Uh, like, like way more. Oh, okay. That's that's a lot to keep uh, organized. Uh, but like me, you're also a fellow... Uh, yeah. You're a fellow customizer. Yeah. Uh, uh, Will dabbles in customization as well here and there, um, but uh, I've you seen have some uh, of his attempts at customizations. Yeah, and uh, when he gets uh, some time away from work, we'll start seeing some more uh, 3D printing come in his uh, from from you know the the mind of the Wilhelm. Yeah. So looking looking forward to that. I know right now you've you've got a lot on your plate at work, so mm-hmm. hopefully soon we'll we'll get that launched. Because I'm, I'm definitely wanting to see more of the 3D printing stuff going. If you follow Bjorn on Instagram, you've probably seen a lot of his uh, customs. That's right. Yeah. So you're I doing just recently mostly. recently started a new page for my customs only. Uh, Majestic right. Customs. And cool. once again, that link will be somewhere. Yeah. We'll put that in the description below along with uh, Kevin Perry's stop motion animation and anything else of interest that we've uh, talked about today. So, uh, you do customs uh, mostly in like what four inch, like the Marauders figures. Uh, yes. What's the the best scale? 
Okay. Well, a lot of people think that. Uh, oh, articulated. It. Yes. Articulated Chad is also in your camp on that. But mm -hmm. I understand because when it comes to real American hero, G.I. Joe works best in 118th scale. I have no argument with that. Best vehicles, best figures. And well, uh, Marauder follows along like this. Yeah. Yeah. At a, and you can get big play sets and things that you just can't do in other scales as well. I mean, you can do it, but it's it was done best in the 118th scale, I think. that sure. um, G.I. Joe definitely showed that, and Star Wars, for that matter, back in the Kenner days. But uh, so what kind of customs do you do? You do? Are you doing um, just certain characters or do you have a theme or just kind of whatever you're well, feeling like? For the most part, it depends on if I have a funny idea, like you'll soon see. And sometimes okay. uh, it's like for something later, like uh, right now I'm working there on the is. Doc Savage. Oh, cool. So here we have a couple of uh, your Star Wars inspired themed uh, critters. So we've got Both a... of these got evolved over time, the idea of them. Okay. So we've got an Ewok chef named <laughs> Yub, Yub Nub. That's nice. Uh, looks like he's been uh, hard at work uh, uh, putting something together for the barbecue. Originally, he had Drox occupation as a, an assassin. Ah, which I so, found equally funny. <laughs> the Ewok assassin. And I found this other stuff, and I made him a chef instead. Nice. Yeah, but is it his like he humans is like his main <laughs> dish or something? Allegedly, yeah. allegedly, we only saw a lot of Star Wars uh, stormtrooper helmets <laughs> in some scenes. Well, They're only allegedly. If you go to an Ewok uh, barbecue. Yeah. Be I'll wary. try to meet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're really stick, cool, and I, yeah. I like them. I like them. Yeah, I've seen them on the Instagram. Salad. So, and, Drock, uh, uh, Drock is a Jawa. Yes, he's a droid hunter. Hmm. I wanted uh, a, pro, a bounty yeah. hunter, a bounty mm -hmm. hunter Jawa. Yeah, which I found the mm -hmm. idea funny. Yeah. But diminutive, I, I but, uh, slightly changed him into a, a droid bounty hunter. That makes, makes sense. Makes sense. And That's I like cool. him. I like and that his name is, is a reference to, uh, what is it? Uh, Judge, Judge Dredd. Judge Dredd? Yeah. Yeah, it's a favorite word yes, amongst... his uh, name Rock. It's basically their mm -hmm. curse word. Right. Nice. In the mega cities. Another and here, idea I found uh, equally funny. Yeah, so Bjorn's working on a, uh, a smaller scale insp inspired by Action Force. So we've got his version of a swarm trooper. And uh, the other one is what, well, Fallout since inspired? Or? Valiverse doesn't do, well, since Valiverse doesn't do 118 scale, uh, I mm -hmm. took it upon myself to try and do some designs. And I'm working on others, like a cool. condor. So this is yeah, so this is kind of a work in progress. That's neat. I like the color scheme. And it just shows yeah. what you can do with uh, Marauders, bits and pieces. And because of this picture I took, it's kind of hard to see. But the gun he's holding mm -hmm. is the exact same one that the Valiverse one has. Minus oh, okay, the so silence. it's the same model. Right. Okay. Yes. Interesting. So Marauders does a lot of uh, real-world type uh, weaponry for their figures as well. As far as the details? For the most part, it's real world, but they do have some sci-fi stuff. Cool. And who's your uh, Fallout friend there? Well, he he's just Wastelander, because I never really... Mm -hmm. <coughs> I never really picked a name for him. Okay. He was supposed to be my physical representation of a Wastelander. Oh, nice. the, and this Fallout one game. will be changed later. Okay. When uh, the... Yeah. Vietnam figures come in. Oh, oh right. very cool. Yeah. So that you'll have some new parts to work with. Well, that's very cool. So, uh, and here we go with uh, Race yeah. Man. That's a, that's a favorite. Classic character. And uh, likeness is pretty good. You got the white hair, you got the red shirt. I'm liking it. And uh, another it's Star Wars. Of, this one came together really mm -hmm. good. Yeah. 
Is now is, is that the final or is he still a work in progress as well? The race Bannon? Uh huh. Or the alien? Either the race or. Bannon? Oh, he's final. Cool. Okay. Sometimes he, I use him as the model for different uh, custom uh, accessories that I do, like a uh, sleeping bag or something. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, so you use him for your scale reference. And he's a what, like a desk buddy, you know, you guys you always have in hand to play with. I've got a couple. More or less. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the other guys, what, a, what do they call him, a Bith? Or um, I can't remember the name. The, the Cantina Band guy. Yeah, a Bith. Okay. Uh, but as a kid, I always called them butthole faces. <laughs> Because of yeah. the, the head head shape, looked like yeah. a big old butt on his head. How unfortunate! And he's a <laughs> he's a Jedi. He doesn't have a no. Actually, he's I haven't don't really know his occupation yet. He's just a random okay. random spacer. He doesn't even have a right. name. So I just in progress. To Walter. Walter. Nice indeed. Well, that's cool. And a tip the customizers out there, this head will fit on Dime Novel Legends and Marauder's Bodies. Oh, cool. No modifications. Nice. So a lot of the pieces from, uh, these are Black Series, I'm assuming, Star Wars, the, the four-inch Black Series, and then uh, Marauder's. Uh, no, and actually, the Vintage Collection. Vintage, okay. And what's the other one, Kentucky Fried Toys, but Not I all think? the pieces will fit. Chicken Fried Toys. Chicken fried toys. Chicken That's fried right. Toys. You're thinking Chicken Kentucky fried, fried movie. The company. That's right. <laughs> Dime Novel <laughs> Legends is the name of the figure line. Right. And they do Wild West stuff. Those are really cool. And so you can use some yeah, of those right. parts to customize yes. and do neat stuff. Excellent. Not, well, not all the pieces me. will swap over to the Marauders, but certain pieces like the feet will definitely swap over. No right. problem. So some yeah. things... Some things you're going to have to do some extra customizing to make it work. But so you get different bits and pieces and you get an idea and you just find a way to make it work. That's cool. When you guys go to uh, Joe Fest slash Valicon, um, Marauders will be there. So it'll be neat to yeah. see uh, what's going on there at the booth. Um, I'm definitely hitting up their booth, but I'm going to the Valiverse booth first. Yeah, I was going to say the Valiver's booth is huge, but uh, <laughs> very close second is the uh, the Marauders, Marauders booth. Yeah, it's always packed, and there's a lot going on there. They even, uh, you know, they've got a huge lineup of all their stuff. They're putting figures together right there for you. Um, tons of opportunities. Well, according there. to the yeah, planogram that I looked up on the site, uh, mm -hmm. they have two tables. Yeah, but they oh, Marauders doing this, okay. yeah, they have like this booth. It's almost like eye level. It's really high. They build it all up and, and they have like a little factory going on in there. You just wait till you see it. it it's great. Cool. It will well, be guys, we're, first con. We're, uh, we're almost at the end of the show, so we'll start wrapping it up. But I do want to uh, thank my guest, Bjorn, and my uh, cohort, Wilhelm. Yeah, I would say, wow, what a great, uh, you know, just uh, kind of look inside the man behind so many uh, things and, and that guy the, you see there. Um, that's right. Yeah, the really man cool. behind the man behind the majestic who is yeah. <laughs> uh, going to gonna start doing more stuff in Instagram as well as uh, maybe branching into YouTube sometime in the near future. Um, well, so he has a I YouTube channel with shorts on my hmm? on my channel. Right. Nothing else. We'll put, yeah. Again, we'll put a link in the description, and uh, this space is going to be under construction, so keep an eye out to see what Bjorn's cooking up. And uh, Bjorn is also going to be working with us with, and has been behind the scenes with the AF3, our show where we explore the lore of Valiverse. He's our favorite wrench, and he will be our man on location when uh, we do Valicon with Will. They're both going to be on the convention floor and checking out the goodies. And I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys come up with. So, yeah, I can't wait. Again, it's going to be great. Yeah, it'll be awesome. We're going to have custom uh, shirts for that. Maybe we'll see. Possible. I think uh, it, it could happen. It's, it's possible. <laughs> Anything's possible. Um, 
let's see what do we got coming up uh we're going to be having uh another action force episode soon will uh what what's next on the agenda bone, i believe so it did, is the swarm that's right we just did bone collector so swarm will mm-hmm. be coming next my favorite uh character the swarm oh yeah that's, that's gonna faction. be fun it's a good faction and uh definitely uh that's excellent. Yeah, definitely featured in the book, which uh, we should probably hardly recommend again. Um, for those who haven't picked it up, please do so. This is the novel by Bill Nedro. Uh, it's called Broken Alliances, and it is a very good read. I'm still working I on it because a copy, I keep. But mm-hmm. my camera looks like uh, it's being uh, filmed with a potato, so you wouldn't be able to see it. <laughs> Fair that. enough. So, yeah, um, we will eventually start uh, delving into the book as well, but we're not spoiling that yet. We're going to wait. Yeah. Uh, right now, we're just going over each of the characters um, based on what we see in the mission files and the figure line. Um, BCs and baddies, we've got some more of that coming your way. Uh, some great guests will be showing up, so keep an eye out for the Largo Lair uh, notifications and see what's coming down the pipe. Guys, I will see you in the very near future uh, in the chats and in other places. You just never know where you guys are going to pop up. And guys, if you have any trouble getting into the lounge, uh, just you got to slip the slip over to a little little money there. It would have saved me a ton of time. I know. Always thanks for having me. Thanks for having me in the lounge. Normally, I'm the guy at the door. Normally, (laughs) I'm the guy at the door, but I was inside this time. So yeah. You got to, you got to negotiate with Eduardo. All right, everybody have a good one. We'll see you in the near future. Thanks.